Okay, then um, I want to get into one small thing from the previous exercise sheet. We had this um, voluntary bonus exercise where you could, um, kind of for the first time, develop a classifier on the data that you annotated. And then um, the idea was to compare this between a few different groups. And uh, so far, five groups have participated in this. And I want to quickly show uh, what the uh, standing is there. So just to quickly remind you, this was this problem of distinguishing web pages that uh, sell things or do not. So uh, simple binary classification problem that uh, you could approach with uh, linear regression or logistic regression and uh, any um, small tricks that you can come up with. And um, the results you can find on the course page here. There's a small leaderboard with the five groups that participated. You see in the um, accuracy column here, this is just the percentage of classification decisions or the ratio of classification decisions that were correct across the, the set of test uh, instances that we provided. And this mean classification error here is just one minus that in uh, this uh, two class uh, simple case. But we show both here. So this is the measure you will find on the evaluating effectiveness slides as well. And yeah. And um, as you can see at the moment, the uh, two Weimar groups who participated are ahead in the game, though the uh, third and uh, second and third place are pretty close. And uh, the group on fifth place might check the implementation because this uh, these numbers look like if your classifier would just uh, do the opposite thing in every case, then it would be much better and would actually take second place. So that might be something to look in. Maybe there's a bug. Yeah, programming error. <laughs> Crazy. You're right. Um, yeah, but that's um, just that for now. If uh, other people are interested in participating, you still can. We will update this then. And um, then from my side, also already uh, happy holidays and uh, happy new year. And we still have uh, a lot of time today to discuss any questions you might have. I think Christopher has um, a small web tool that he wants to show you. Um, so maybe we'll get into that next, unless there are any vision questions right now. Um, okay, I can get into it right away. And it's very nice compliment to what Benno was talking about right now. And this would help you with your intuitions, actually trying the things he was describing in your browser. I'll paste the link in the chat if you want to follow along or play with it later. And let me share my screen if I can do that. Um, One moment. Hmm. This doesn't seem to be working for some reason. There we go. Do you see my screen? Yes. Top sentence of 2020. Uh, so this is a website where you can actually train a neural network in your browser. And it's a very nice uh, tool to experiment with linear separability, the features you might need if you're just using a linear model. So these four here constitute the training data that you want to separate. It's a classification problem. I'll start with the simplest thing which is linearly separable. And since the, the outputs are soft, differentiable, I will discretize them so as to assign a, like a visual class. This is not what the network is outputting. This is 
basically uh, applying a, a ceiling function on the output. So if we remove all the hidden layers and we choose a linear activation, this is basically just doing linear regression. And it should be enough if I refresh this in a way such that the output is completely wrong right now. If I train that by pressing play, I can immediately get the output that I want. Now, if we switch to a non-separable, not linearly separable data set, then no matter how long I train, I can only output a line. So there is nothing to learn other than just basically guessing at random. So we're not doing anything better than guessing at random. What we could do in this case is either apply uh, the multi-layer perceptron that Benno talked about, or we, if, if we want to do some feature engineering, we could notice that if we add the product of the features, then we can stay in the linear setting and just train that and basically fit to our, perfectly fit to our uh, training set. Um, what if we add a hidden layer? And since Benno said that if you add many hidden layers, but your activation is still linear, that is completely equivalent to just linear model because if you um, compose many different linear functions, it's still a linear function. Um, so let me choose a sigmoid activation, see if I can do anything with two neurons. And I can somehow do something that is better than guessing at random but I'm still not fitting to my data set. So I could take suggestions from the audience as to what to do, or we can just experiment with either adding neurons in the hidden layer. If I add. Add neurons in the hidden layer. I want to see what happens. <laughs> okay. So already a tiny bit better. If you hover over the neurons, it will show you what they're, oh, hold on, let me move this it will show you what each neuron is contributing to the prediction so we've been training for a thousand epochs an epoch being one run through the through the training set um i'd like to try a fourth neuron see if we can come up with a better fit to our data and it does seem to be doing much better look at that the loss is just basically going down to zero. You could also experiment with uh, something that looks like a circle. It's separated, definitely not a line. So if we go back to the setting where we have no hidden layer, no activation, you would need the squares of your features to be able to represent a circle. But if you remove that, you would definitely need some nonlinear activation to be able to represent. Let's try two different hidden layers now as opposed to more neurons in one. Ah, the activation is still linear and you can see that I have a ton of neurons, many hidden layers, and the activation is linear. So it's just basically a wasteful linear regression. So if I stop this, refresh, choose um, Relu, for instance, which is a different nonlinear activation, which is the kind you see more used more often nowadays. And if we try that, it is. training it is learning a, a nice representation that separates it but it's still you can you can see that the, the network could use with a bit more representation power so i'll just add a neuron in every hidden layer and you can see that this is doing actually much better it is 
learning to separate the data. And if you hover over these, you can see the contribution of each one of these neurons that on its own is acting like a locally linear separator, but they are because of the non-linearity interacting and composing in a way that's that ends up with something that is non-linear. And if I look at this, actually, it looks like this one and this one are doing most of the job. So looks like we might only need one in the third layer. Yeah, let's do that. And yeah, you're right. We just need that. That, that was the small non-linear push we needed to be able to represent the Yeah, and thank you, Christopher. Very nice that you can present this and show this, um, because this uh, I'm very happy that the students have these tools, can play around this, and understand why this happens. Mm -hmm. Both is necessary. Very nice. There are more training data set for you to play around with, some more challenging than others. And yes, that's it for me, I suppose.